Elementor, pros and cons, let's get to it. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is David, so I just wrapped up a two hour long or so tutorial video on how to use Elementor and the Hello theme that is also made by Elementor in order to create a very impressive looking website. And overall, I'm quite impressed with Elementor about what you're able to do and the kind of specific control you have over the design of your website but it's not perfect. So in this video, I just wanna create a short comprehensive video over the pros and cons of Elementor, so let's begin. So the first pro that I would say is that it's a visual front end editing experience when designing your website. And I personally really like that and I think that's kind of become a standard that people have come to expect with any type of WordPress theme. Now, it's still a selling point, but it's not that big of a selling point as it was in the past. Because a lot of people don't know, like WordPress used to be like blogger.com in the sense that you install a theme and a theme was functionally just a skin and you had no control really, like very, very limited control over the look and feel of your website. And so like when, when page building plugins came out is a revolution. It's like, whoa, whoa, that's amazing. Like you can edit your website from the front end, drag and drop with blocks. I don't need to know HTML or CSS. That was the big selling point of Elementor. But now that WordPress has come out with their Gutenberg editor and that Gutenberg editor keeps getting better over time, little by little, I think that's kind of cutting into that main selling point of Elementor, but it's still something worth noting that you have a nice visual front end experience when using Elementor. Another pro that I really like is the template and block library. So when you're using Elementor, you, what you can do is like you can just jump into Elementor's proprietary library of different blocks. So you can just like install a block quickly and easily or like a pre-designed template or a pre-designed block. So for example, like you're editing your website, you wanna add like an email opt-in form section of your website right above the footer. With Elementor, you can totally do that. Or you wanna have like some type of call to action, email opt-in form at the very top of your website. With Elementor, you can just do that at the click of a button. Now, most of those templates are behind the paywall and you have to have the pro version, but it's still something worth noting that you have access to their full block library if you're willing to pay for the premium version. Uh, but if you're not willing to pay for the pro version, uh, you, you can still access a lot of useful blocks and obviously templates. Like, so Elementor is really good because you can just install fully designed websites and customize from there. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of using templates. I really think that you should take the time to kind of understand how Elementor works, how whatever tool you're using works, and then design your own website so you have that, you know, just full control over your website. Yeah, there's a learning curve, but I, I really recommend doing that long term. But still something worth noting that with Elementor you have that option. So, so if you want to like install third-party blocks to add more functionality onto Elementor, you can do that. If you want to install a template, you can do that. If you want to have pre-designed blocks, you can do that. And all these little details add to the functionality of Elementor. Optimize for mobile. So this is one cool thing I really like about Elementor is that you can optimize your design for mobile. So when you're editing with Elementor, you're able to view your website on a desktop, tablet, mobile device, and that's really helpful because you can just make sure that your website doesn't look weird because you may design something that looks really cool on your like laptop, but then when someone's on a phone, it looks terrible. Like you make some call to action that's like a 60 font size, it looks fantastic, <laughs> then someone's on their phone and it looks terrible. And it's important, mobile's important because I can tell you 50% of my traffic to Website Create Pro is people on their phone, so it's very important. And it's just something that I like about a mentor that a lot of other themes kind of skip out on because I have another tutorial video here on using Astra and Gutenberg. And for that kind of setup, you actually can't control for just specifically mobile. Whereas with Elementor, you can. So you can set the designs like, hey, when people are visiting my site on a laptop, the font size will be like, the call to action will be 60 font. But if people are on a mobile device, it'll be shrunk down to like 30 so it fits properly and looks okay. You have that kind of flexibility uh, with Elementor. And so that's something I really like because you can optimize the design of your website and blog using Elementor for mobile devices. The Hello theme and Elementor are a match made in heaven. So when Elementor came out, it was originally just like a page building plugin that was kind of designed to work with any theme and it does work with any theme, okay? And that's something that's really cool, but like they went ahead and actually created a dedicated theme that's called Hello, the Hello theme. And it's just a blank slate theme where you can completely edit the header, footer, and body as you want with Elementor with no restrictions. So, you know, it's not gonna be like a clunky experience where you're using Elementor and you're using something like the 
2017 theme from WordPress or the 2019 theme from WordPress and you have some type of like annoying limitation, the Hello theme is completely designed and optimized to work well with Elementor. And so if you wanna invest in like Elementor Pro, for example, I definitely like recommend getting Elementor Pro and using their Hello theme and really just doing a deep dive and learning everything you can about Elementor because with those two things combined, you can really create an impressive looking website once you have a good, strong grasp of how Elementor works. So is Elementor perfect? No, absolutely not. So here's some cons. Okay, so the first con of the Elementor plugin is that it replaces the Gutenberg editor, which for me kind of is a deal breaker if you're not using the Hello theme. Uh, because like Elementor was like, again, like kind of a big deal, really revolutionary when it first came out when WordPress was still kind of a text-based editor. But now that WordPress has Gutenberg and you're able to design an impressive looking website with Gutenberg, if you just know how to use it. Uh, I have another tutorial video using the Asher theme in Gutenberg. I created a coffee blog and it looks really nice, really impressive with just the <laughs> WordPress default editor and Asher theme. Uh, and so I don't like that Elementor kind of takes over the whole control of your website because a lot of people think that like, oh, I'll use Elementor, I'll design like a nice looking homepage and then I'll use Gutenberg on like my blog post and say, no, you can't. Like they, they, the Elementor takes over the whole control and look and feel of your website. And they do that purposely kind of to, to, you know, put things behind a paywall, so to speak. And so that's like, you know, Elementor has a lot of specific limitations that they have built in if, you, if you're just using the free version. And so that's something that I don't like because you can't take advantage of just Elementor and the page building functionality and you also use Gutenberg, you have to pick one or the other. All right, so another con is that Elementor is just not that useful anymore with like Astra, Ocean WP, the Hestia theme, etc. the way it used to be because Honestly, Gutenberg just keeps getting better, and so you can design a really impressive looking website just using the default block editor from WordPress, and you don't need to have all these limitations that the free version of Elementor has built in in order to get you to upgrade to the pro version. And so that's why it's a con because like that's just cutting into their business just a little bit because again, like you can design an impressive looking website just using Gutenberg. You, know, you can install plugins for WordPress that add awesome looking blocks and design to your website. You know, like Themify has their own sp uh, specific block editor that you can add. Uh, there's other types like Stackable that I really like. And all these add a lot of functionality onto Gutenberg. Uh, you know, WordPress has their extensive library and you can add tons of different blocks more so than Elementor. And I personally just find that Elementor a little bit is kind of falling behind a little bit. Uh, Elementor is still fantastic if you intend on using Elementor Pro and the Hello theme. That's a fantastic combination. But overall, if you're going to be using like a different theme, the functionality and the advantage of using Elementor, it just keeps decreasing over time as Gutenberg just keeps getting better. You can't blog with the free version of Elementor. So for me personally, that's a deal breaker. That's the, just the dumbest limitation that Elementor currently has and that they still keep. Because honestly, like people have more options and choice nowadays, and I think that's something that they definitely need to reconsider because look, I can use Astra and the Gutenberg editor and design an impressive looking website. I can design my blog post and blog archive, make something look really cool and awesome. And then like, if I use decide to use like Astra and Elementor, I can't edit my blog post. So it's like, why would I use Elementor? I just don't understand that. Uh, I think it's just a silly limitation because the whole reason people get started with WordPress is to blog. And then so like, I think a lot of beginners get frustrated and confused where it's like, okay, great, I can design my website with Elementor. Like, how come I can't design my my archive page? How come I can't design my blog post? Why do I keep getting these like weird errors all the time when I try and edit this? The reason you get errors is because you have to upgrade to the pro version in order to have access over the design of your blog archive page and individual blog posts. So if you want to blog, if that's what you kind of want to do with Elementor, uh, you have to upgrade to the pro version. You don't use the free version. And last is that Elementor has a learning curve. And even for me as like someone who like does this stuff for a living, I was still having to find myself like doing like Google searches and like watching YouTube videos about like, how do I do this with Elementor? How do I do that with Elementor? How do I do this with Elementor? You know, I was using the Hello theme, like, like, how do I edit the header? How do I edit the footer? Oh, I can't. I have to upgrade to the pro version or I have to install this random plugin. Oh, okay, I'll install this random plugin. Boom, I can design my header and footer. How do I turn off page titles? Like I make a, I set a page as a homepage and it says homepage. How do I hide that? Like other themes, it's pretty intuitive. Like you just go into the back end of your page and there's like a little option in the sidebar. No, 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 not with Elementor. You have to like click the little gear icon in the corner and then like <laughs> click this tab. Oh, then you can turn off. Things like that. So I personally found like Elementor is feature rich, but just a little, some things are just not intuitive, okay? I found myself like clicking around, getting lost. Like how do I edit this? Where is that button, this, this? 
Elementor definitely has a learning curve. So that's good and bad because like if you're willing to take the time to learn Elementor, obviously it's very, very impressive plugin. Especially if you have the pro version, you can create some very impressive uh, types of designs with your website. I mean, there's tutorials here on YouTube where people create like these beautiful like parallax style like headers at the top. Uh, you know me, I'm not big into like creating like overly complicated websites, but if you wanna create like an overly complicated website, you can do that with Elementor if you're willing to learn, but it does have a learning curve. Okay, so to conclude this video, Elementor pros and cons. So in general, if you wanna use the free version of Elementor, you have to be okay with not being able to design the blog post and blog archive page of your website because you're not gonna be able to like just blend that section of your website in with the whole overall design of your website. And so for most, that's kind of a deal breaker because the whole reason people use WordPress is to blog. So the free version of Elementor is fantastic if you're creating like a 10 to 30 page like business website or personal website and you want something where you have like a, like a Google Sites or Squarespace experience with like a visual front end editing experience but you still have a lot of like specific control over each block, then Elementor, the free version is fantastic. Now, if you want to blog, obviously you have no choice. You have to get Elementor Pro and it's good. Elementor Pro is good because you get full access to everything that Elementor has to offer. You get full access to their template library, all their specific blocks, the blog archive page, individual blog posts, and that in combination with the Hello theme is a really nice uh, competitor to say something like the Divi theme, which is still one of the most popular uh, WordPress themes around. I personally like Divi theme more, but that's not to say that Elementor and the Hello theme are bad. They're just two different ecosystems so you can make that decision which one you want to use. But those that is it. Those, that is the pros and cons of using Elementor in a nutshell. All right, everybody, that is it for this video on the pros and cons of Elementor. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, hit that like button. My name is David, WebsiteCreatePro.com. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.